great search bar to buy. DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week, Lady Ada uses her powers of engineering for good and helps you find things on DigiKey.com. What are you searching for this week at DigiKey? Okay, so let's go to the overhead, and I'll show you this board design I'm working on. So this is a... KB2040, so I designed this board, I think I showed it off a couple weeks ago, finally got the PCBs in. So it's a USB-C um, RP2040 board, so this is the RP2040, and here's some like power regulator stuff. And it's got uh, castellated pins, uh, and it's designed to be pro-micro shape, which means that it can be used in keyboards. It's like it's specifically designed for use with keyboards. Um, that you would have plug USB-C in, and then it would generate the key commands while having um, you know, LEDs or uh, key matrix uh, anodes and cathodes connected to um, this row of pins here. So um, the RP2040, we've chatted about in getting all the uh, added peripherals that you need, the, the QSPY memory and the crystal, and I got some tactile buttons. But one thing that was um, new on this board that I don't put on a lot of boards recently is a PTC fuse. So the Pro Micro has a resettable fuse on it, and uh, folks might be familiar with them because um, Arduino uses PTC fuses a lot, which is good because it helps protect the board and the computer. Now your USB hub and computer has PTC fuses inside of it, so if you ever plug in something to USB and it actually overdraws the current, it'll sh auto shut off and you know you might have to like wait a couple minutes you might have to reboot the computer to get that port to, to come back um a ptc fuse is a thermally it's a basically it's a resistor that's very temperature dependent so as more current goes through it it heats up and the resistance like goes way way high like so high that it basically opens up and the, basically the fuse is open uh cutting off power until this cools down uh, so it's kind of nice because unlike a glass or, you know, wire fuse, you don't have to worry about replacing it. Um, it automatically, you know, self heals. Uh, you can get these in different currents and voltages. And of course, they're pick and place friendly. It's a very uh, slim um, PTC fuse here. So we want one. This one is, is a pretty chunky, looks like it's an, you know, maybe an 18 by 12, 18, 12 sized PTC fuse. We want one that's much smaller. We're gonna have one that's about this big. It's 0806. Uh, we just don't have as much space on this board because you know I have to maintain the the physical size. So this this part here, this is the PTC fuse. So it's an 0805. I was like, can I fit an 0206? And the answer is no. There was just really no space. I was just completely jam packed in there. So let's go to. Uh, the layout first real fast and we'll take a look at the this is it so this is the PTC fuse if I get info on it it's just called fuse and it's 0805 sized so let's go for an 0805 um, imperial sized fuse and we'll see what the options are uh, in specific this one's gonna be connected to USB so let's you know do something that's that's USB friendly okay so well, too much stuff open here Okay, so hold on. Let's go to DigiKey and uh, let's search for PTC. So it's a positive temperature coefficient fuse. Buys close fuse. Okay, so there's actually a whole category which I've used multiple times before. PTC fuses. So go there. Okay, so now we have to decide what we want as our options. So the first thing is, well, obviously let's pick active and let's also pick in stock only and let's exclude marketplace. So we're only looking at stuff that's shipping directly from DigiKey and in stock. Um, next up, the voltage max. So the voltage max is exactly what you think. What's the, what's the maximum voltage that you could have as the power supply that you're, you're limiting? Now it's, you know, you're going to see these in like chunks of like 6, 12, and then, you know, 50, and then up to like 100. The larger the voltage, of course, the bigger the fuse. So if you're looking for price, you know, you might end up at a lower voltage. But since uh, size is most important to us, um, we're probably going to be limited to like that 06, sorry, that, that 6 volt or maybe even 8 volt um, power maximum based on the size. So... Actually, since our size is the most specific thing we have, let's go to surface mount. 
and let's pick from the package size 0805, which is 2012 metrics. So you can see these get very large, and there's also through hole size ones, and there's whatever. There's these like gigantic, chunky square ones. So let's um, let's apply. Okay, so now we're only going to be looking at the 0805 ones. Um, so the next thing is uh, right. So you can say we can we can pick the voltage max, but since all of them are above our maximum voltage, which is USB, which is five volts, you know we actually can leave this alone. So the next question is the current hold and the current trip, and that's actually kind of the the, the most important things you're going to want to think about. In general, the current trip is two times the current hold. Now, like I said, this is, a, this is a temperature coefficient device. It's very temperature uh, dependent. So you don't want it to act significantly different or poorly at like high or low temperatures. You want it to be somewhat consistent. So it's not like when it hits that number, it'll immediately trip. There's going to be some variation, right? So you want to think of based on the usage current, how, you know, how much um, current is going to be going through. Is it continuous? Is it spiking? Hold is like your continuous current, and trip is like when it spikes up to that, that's when it's going to shut off. Now, technically, for USB, 500 milliamps is considered the standard hold current. I will say, though, that you can, you can get ones with higher or lower. So let's look at 500 milliamps to one amp. And that's what the hold, because it's like, that's our like consistent power draw. Why would you even need that much for a keyboard? Well, maybe you have a lot of NeoPixels on it. Um, you have an OLED screen, you have a buzzer, like a lot of things are adding up before you know it. You're at about 500 milliamps. But you don't want, of course, to have the fuse so low that people are tripping it just on usage because it'll make the device seem really flaky. So then let's apply all. Okay, so next there's, there's thickness, which I don't really care about. Um, there's the resistance post trip there's you know the resistance uh the, the current trip you can see there's it's usually about two times whatever the hold is and then current max is like how much you could force through it before it gets damaged um time to trip is you know how long at the high current before it actually trips most of these are about you'll see they're, they're all pretty much about 0.1 to 0.3 seconds they're not instantaneous but they're also not super slow just make sure that it won't damage your board um, okay, and next up, and then of course, if you need over voltage protection, this doesn't do over voltage protection, this does over current protection. Um, if you need over voltage, there are different input filter chips that you can do that, you know, they'll, they're, they're safe for a very wide range of input voltages or negative voltages, and they won't let current through unless it's like the right level. And sometimes, sometimes they also have uh, current limiting as well. So this is, this is good for USB where you're, you're never going to have something over 5 volts come into USB, so you don't have to worry about protecting against over voltages, just over currents. All right, so next up, let's uh, look. So, yeah, so we've got 750 milliamps, we've got 500, we've got 1 amp. Really, it's up to you. I think I'm going to go with the 500 milliamps. It's, it's, it's a safe amount, but that's also, again, the standard um, so having this be compatible with the Pro Micro, if it's doing 500 hold, I should do 500 hold. So when you do that, there's about seven options remaining. So there's a couple of, uh, what's really nice is, you know, these are generic, so you can get them from Borns and from Little Fuse and from Bell Fuse. Um, as you can tell by the stock numbers, uh, Bell Fuse is super popular. You know, there's 135,000 of these in stock right now. Um, this is a nice rendering. And, uh, you know, it says 20 week lead time, but there's 135,000 in stock. So, like, we're, we're good to go. And these are only about 10 cents a piece. So, I think I'm going to pick up these. Um, they're good, but then, again, don't worry about it. There's always fuses available in that package from other suppliers. So, you know, if you're worried about, like, shortages or something, just make sure you have the part numbers written down for all the alternatives. Uh, but this one seems like it's going to be fine for quite a while. That's the great search.